going to be demonstrating how to do simple bronze casting from blanks made on the MakerBot. What we have here is our traditional uh, QC Collab coin. I've been told that it is traditional for all new hacker spaces to make a coin design as one of their first MakerBot prints, and we decided we want to make ours in bronze. So what we're going to do today is discuss how you go from MakerBot plastic to Bronze. First thing you should know about these coins, about this MakerBot, is that it leaves ridges along the edges and inside all the surfaces. These uh, ridges are uh, need to be worked out usually by hand with a piece of sandpaper or uh, you know with an exacto knife. If you don't work the ridges out, the sand will stick to them, and it will be hard to get a clean cast. You don't need to do it on all prints, particularly if the print has nice smooth sides. Like this fish, for example. This fish doesn't need to be reworked. As a matter of fact, the plastic and the ridges make a beautiful pattern on it. The uh, fish, as you can see, has nice beveled sort of edges here. Now, on my coin design, I've gone ahead and I've beveled most of these edges, made them out of sight slant so that they will uh, print really well using this technique. So uh, now let's go on to do what's called a make a sand mold to do the process called sand casting. Well, here is um, our snap frames. These are called snap frames. As you can see, they're just wooden uh, frames with uh, a latch on one side and a hinge on the other. In this case, they've been made by assembling of some trim. There is um, two sets of them. There are nails in one side and holes in the other, so they will assemble and hold together as one solid unit. And what we're going to do here is we're going to put a board in between the two snap frames and we put our our object and this device here called uh, the sprue. This device is uh, just to make an empty space in the mold that the molten bronze will fill. It will fill this first and then we'll make a channel to fill the coin. We want to make sure we get a nice big space there so we can make our pour holes and our vent holes and uh, so that we don't get any uh, anything but bronze of the coin. Anything like sand that gets washed down will collect in here instead of in our object. The first thing you do is take a sprinkling of parting dust. And this is basically any hydrophobic uh, compound. Now, some people say they just use calcium carbonate. I have uh, never tried. This is actual uh, parting dust that I purchased on the internet. And uh, what this does is it makes sure the sand does not stick to your parts. And especially on your MakerBot parts, you want to be liberal with this because the sand likes to stick to the plastic. Now after you get a nice solid dusting of parting dust on there, you're going to take your sieve and you're going to sift some fine grain sand onto the part. You won't, don't want any lumps on your part because that will uh, detract from the resolution of your casting. Keep sifting sand onto it until you get the part completely covered. When you get it up on there that you feel comfortable, you just can go ahead and start moving it in with your hands. Pile it up good and high. Now, this is the most important step of the whole process right here, is the compacting of this stuff. This sand is really loose right now. This is uh, a ram, as you can see. It's just a piece of wood with a uh, tapered end at one end and one end at the other. You take the tapered end and you tuck in the edges and you push pretty hard here. You want this sand packed very, very tightly. And by the way, this sand is what's called green sand. Green sand is sand that's been prepared for casting. It is very fine grained silica sand uh, mixed with a clay that absorbs water called bentonite. And, uh, Having uh, this clay present in the sand is what makes it hold a really good image. That's why some beaches are good for making sand castles and some beaches aren't. Beaches with just plain old sand, the castles don't hold together very well. But you mix some clay in there and uh, it's a whole different world. And uh, as you'll see once I get this mold packed in, the sand is actually surprisingly uh, resilient.
keep packing this mold until the sand is all the way above the snap frames. After that, you just shave it off and fill in any parts that you didn't get packed down good. Right there. Go ahead and gently turn this over, take them apart, and you'll see that we have the screw and our coin very nicely packed in sand here. I'm going to put the top frame back on with my little nail holes here. More parting dust. Everybody uses a sock, by the way. It's considered the optimal way to distribute parting dust. Now, the back of my mold doesn't matter because they're both flat, they're not very interesting. So, I don't feel the need to uh, sift on top of it, but if you add detail on the back as well as the front of your object, you want to see sand onto the back of it as well, so that you would get nice resolution. In this case, you'd only get nice resolution of ridges, so, no need. The sand is reusable, by the way. After you do casting, you just uh, smash it up and uh, moisten it a little bit and use it again. Again, I'm going to tuck the edges with my ram. Again, take the butt of the ram, flatten the sand into the mold. Just like I did on the other side, I'm going to go ahead and shave off the top here and get it nice and packed in. And then I can take it apart. Okay, and I'll carefully set this aside. And this is the moment of truth. This is a very uh, ginger part. This coin design that we have has a lot of big vertical sections, a lot of deep wells that the sand likes to stick to. It's actually pretty uh, difficult to get this one to cast well. So, first thing you want to do is take something and give the coin a good tapping. You want to make sure that the sand is not sticking. So, you just want to vibrate it around. And you'll take your screw, insert a couple twists. And try to work it out with as little damage to the mold as possible. And you see where it's gobbed some sand. And that sand is areas in the mold that are going to fill in with bronze where there should not be bronze. But that's okay because you can come out and work that out later with the Dremel. Next step is blow everything out of here. You're going to lose a little more resolution at that step too. Now, if you rework the design, in this case you can see where the trouble spots are. Where there's a deep well with edges close together, where the ridges are catching in the sand. Now, we can do a couple things. We can make this not as thick, this relief, so we can make the relief shorter. We can get in there and we can work those edges better. Or uh, we can make them uh, beveled. As you've seen, I made all these gear edges beveled, but I did not make these edges here beveled. I did not make these edges in here beveled. And I did not make these Q and these eyes aren't beveled enough. And you can see it grabs the sand where the edges are perfectly straight. But the cast is going to look beautiful anyway. And we're going to do the same thing with the sprue. Obviously not as important, but we don't want the sprue to destroy the mold, so we're still going to tap it and work it loose and then gently remove it.